All right, welcome everyone to our uh, video blog about the show Breaking Bad. We're going to talk a little bit about how much uh, and why we like the show and how much we like it today. And I think a good way to start us off on that is to talk a little bit about how we were introduced to the show. So, Alec, you want to talk a little bit about how you were introduced to it? Sure. Um, so I generally heard a lot about it being a good show in the past uh, from various people, including these gentlemen here. Um, and uh, I recently just started getting into good TV, TV shows that were apparently good, uh, including this and The Walking Dead, and I just started watching and got into it, so. Very cool. Yeah, I started uh, sort of in a similar way to Alec. I started watching um, Breaking Bad because... I had heard, you know, it was critically acclaimed, so Brian Cranston, who plays uh, Walter White on the show, who's the main character, had won the Emmy for Best Actor in a Drama, uh, I believe, two or three years in a row when I had started watching it. And so it came out on Netflix, and I'd been, I'd been wanting to watch it for a while, especially because I knew Brian Cranston from Malcolm in the Middle, where he played the dad on that show. So as soon as I saw it on Netflix, I, you know, kind of instantly uh, started watching it, and... You know, the rest is history. Uh, I liked it so much that I've watched it since then. Jesse? Jesse, you're muted. You're muted, so why don't you fix that? It uh, should be on the top right. It'll be okay, there we go. Yeah, there you go. Um, so the way I got into it was um, early on this past summer, I remember hearing some of the... the Last year, seniors, so class of 2012, like Alex Lursky, Kyle Patel, and them all talk about it and how good of a show it was. So I said, hey, you know, I'll check it out. And then I, uh, I did. I started uh, slowly watching, um, and then I quickly got into it, and it became my favorite show. Uh, uh, I guess... I didn't really start until this year. I guess I heard all the talk about it um, in Mian's class from Jamie and uh, Jesse and Akil, and they're all talking about it. And it seemed pretty interesting, especially how into it you guys were. So I figured might as well start watching. So I started watching it online, and then I got Netflix, and I really started flying through the seasons. And uh, now I'm at season five, but I haven't started season five, so I'm just finished season four, so I'm pretty far into the uh, excitement, I guess you'd say. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I think what happened with me was a few years ago, actually, one of my family friends suggested that I start watching the show. And at that point, uh, I wasn't really as uh, interested in it, not remotely as interested in it as I am now. And I didn't actually start watching when he told me to, but one day I was just, last summer, I was probably in Zoom a little bit after school and did I was just sitting like, on that couch right there in my basement, and uh, I was I was on Netflix, and I decided, hey, I want to start watching something new. And I saw Breaking Bad, and I remember being having it recommended to me not only by my family friend, but also several others uh, like Jamie who had spoken about it before. So I said, you know what, let's, let's give it a whirl. So I watched uh, three seasons last summer. Uh, then I finished up four towards the end of the summer and the beginning of the school year. And I caught up uh, with season five just before winter break ended. So that's kind of my introduction and progression so far throughout the show. Yeah, to talk a little bit just real quickly about how many seasons there are and what the structure of that is, um, just because we've mentioned, you know, I started watching season one through three. Each episode or each season, I think, is like thirteen episodes. Um, okay. And there's been uh, four season or there's been five four seasons with thirteen episodes, and then. This last season they've had is season five, and that's going to be uh, the the final season. And what they did is they actually split it up into two eight episode like half seasons. So this past summer they did the first eight episodes of season five, and this coming summer uh, they're going to do uh, the last eight. And they actually didn't really do that to split up season five. It was really to have a, a season five and six, but to get the um, the actors' contracts like without having to work them out again. They split it into like two halves of one season, but it's really more like six seasons, so. Okay, uh, 
How about, I mean, now that we've all kind of gone through that, what do you say we just say maybe uh, who our favorite character is in just a couple of sentences? Why? So Nick, you want to speak that off? Yeah. Um, I know it's probably going to be cliche if I say the main character, but uh, my favorite character isn't the main character. I like um, maybe because I remind myself of him, or maybe just because he seems like a really cool guy. I think uh, with the character development, which I think we'll talk about later, I think they really do a good job with Hank, especially within uh, the past two seasons, three and four, um, with the things that Hank experiences and the way he changes as a person, especially with chasing after the, uh, the blue meth mystery and all that stuff. And I think having that development from him being – a really stable person where he can actually um, perform his job without any real hiccups into someone who is being, uh, I guess you could say, messed with, because he's kind of he's kind of on this trail for this uh, these drug dealers, and he keeps hitting dead ends so on and so forth, and uh, Walt and Jess keep getting away from his um, prying eyes, I guess you could say. All right. Um, my favorite character, uh, I, w I would say Hector, uh, Uncle Hector, but he's such a minor character, being that he doesn't say anything. I, I do like the dynamic that he adds to it, though. The uh, kind of the side plot that kind of follows him. Uh, Alec, I don't know. Um, I if, haven't heard of Hector yet. You don't know who? Okay. You have, but you oh. may not. He's the guy that rings the bell. He's in a Oh, okay. That's you, not, okay. You, you don't know the story behind him yet, so I won't say anything about it. But um, other than him, my favorite character uh, would probably have to be Mike. I think he's such a cool character. And while Walt can sometimes be pretty vague and mysterious, he's not really, and we kind of know a lot about him. We know a lot about Jesse. We know that he got kicked out of his parents' house. We know that Walt uh, did work on a Nobel Prize winning project. But we don't really know anything at all about Mike. And I think that's kind of cool. And I like how he he is such a hard guy, but at the same time, you see him with his granddaughter, and he's... yeah. You know, yeah. Being like I, a I really like the granddaughter as, as sort of his motivation, you know. Yeah. Right. I think that's kind of cool how they have that the the, the contrast between um, two different parts of his character. Yeah. Yeah. Most definitely. Um, my favorite character, um, like Nick says, is probably cliched. I would say I would say Walter White, and he's the main character. Maybe maybe not. He he might not be my favorite character as a person. Um, Without uh, you know spoiling anything in the show, Walter White is the main character, and he's a high school chemistry teacher, and um, he ends up getting like this uh, very advanced form of lung cancer, and um, more or less uh, he kind of realizes he's on his way out, and he wants to leave something for his family, and you know sort of provide them with something so that if he dies, you know they're they're not uh, penniless, but so you know from that he sort of ends up cooking meth or. Look, he looks into cooking meth, and you know the the rest of the series follows. So I think watching him is, is fascinating, and I think it's very interesting just how his character develops and how much of that you know we, we sort of find out. Uh, like we mentioned, we as Jesse mentioned, you know Mike is this character that's really mysterious, and whereas you know we know a lot about the background of Walter in contrast, but I think we actually kind of know a lot about. Mike, as far as his motivations and his ideas, and so, and again, in contrast, Walter is this character where, although we know his background and we know his initial motivations, trying to help his family, you know, we also don't know what goes on inside goes on inside his head. So I think that's really interesting. As far as a, a character that I actually really uh, like is as a person, or at least a, as a funny guy, is a, this character Saul Goodman, and he's a lawyer, uh, but. What, one of the lines when he shows up is they say, you know, uh, you don't want a criminal lawyer, you want a criminal 
lawyer. And so Saul is this guy that sort of does anything he can to keep a, a court case from actually going to court. You know, so he'll try and settle and do whatever and try and get his clients out of, uh, out of, out of jail or out of problems. So I think that's really uh, funny and interesting. <laughs> yeah, so uh, speaking of mysterious characters like Jesse's Mike, um, I actually like a character that you meet a little bit later in the show. Uh, I'm a big Gus fan. So he's like the boss, um, and he basically runs the whole business. And originally when I first like started watching the show, I thought that like Walt definitely has to be the one in charge of all this, and he has to take charge of everything because he's the main character. But no, Gus is really kind of the mastermind behind all this. Um, and the way he deals with things professionally, but also everything he wants gets done, and he makes sure that nothing bad happens to him. Um, I think that's a really impressive way to deal with things. Um, except recently, I just got uh, to the end of season three, and uh, uh, not to spoil anything, but uh, he does something that really disappointed me. Um, and he kind of like turned on people, uh, and it, uh, it really changed the way I looked at him from kind of a real good guy to maybe not so good, but he still really is the mastermind of this whole thing. Especially I think you'll notice that with a lot of characters where they'll do things that disappoint you or they'll seem like good guys and maybe aren't. Um, right. Certainly something to watch for. With the, It's a character flaw that I think a lot of them kind of have. Yeah, it's a running theme between all of them. Yeah, when it comes to you know being a good guy, I mean, I think that's... Where maybe I would say that my favorite character in the show. I mean, obviously, I'm intrigued by Walt and his change throughout the show, but I'm also just as intrigued by Jesse's transformation throughout the show. So, as Jimmy explained, Walter White, the chemistry teacher, got into the business of producing and selling methamphetamine, which is basically the premise of the show. But the way he actually gets into that is by a former uh, failure student of his named Jesse Pinkman. And Jesse Pinkman basically has uh, gotten in with bad people and he's uh, into the drug business. And he is the one who allows Walter to move into that area with whatever knowledge that he has on that. But Jesse, as you see throughout the show, it's Jesse become, as Walt gets more and more involved in it, Jesse continuously tries to become less and less involved in it. And that's one of the coolest things that you see. You see growth in Jesse as a person and a character throughout the throughout the series and I'm definitely interested to see what's gonna go on with him moving forward because there's some stuff that uh, he and Walt, you know, they have between them but maybe Jesse does or doesn't know about it yet. And uh, and then other than him, I gotta say that in terms of being a good guy, my favorite character in the show has gotta be Brock. So, <laughs> Basically, who? Brock is this eight-year-old kid, eight or nine years old. Oh. Who just, yeah, he just sits there, and he's like, he's a very innocent guy, and I just think his presence in the show, and even though he has such a minor role, and his placement in the show as someone who's never doing anything wrong, always just kind of going about his own business, it's it's nice to see someone like that on a show like this when there's so many flaws in each character, and I mean that's just my personal opinion. Yeah, I think Mr. Uh, we talked about Mr. Uh, talk about this show with Mr. Man pretty often. And I think he said it best when he's like, "Most of these characters are not good people." Yeah. You know, it's hard to pick out you know someone that is free of you know any sort of like any of those problems where they don't have like you yeah. know where they're not involved in something illegal or they're doing something that's morally wrong. And I guess that's true of human beings as a whole. You know, no one is perfect or no one is, you know, totally um, free of any of those issues, but I, I do I do think that's interesting um, that, you know, the few, one of the few characters that does that is a, is a child. Yeah. I think it was, I was talking with Jamie about this, is that um, the way the show works, it makes you like the bad people, it makes you like the people that make the drugs, it makes you like the people that kill people. And then you absolutely hate characters that are actually trying to do good. Right. Uh, mayhaps not Brock, but uh, just for example, Walt's wife. I know anyone I talk to that's ever watched the show absolutely hates her. And I guess with good reason. 
But um, I think the thing is, is that we we in the as an audience, and I forget the literary term for that is, but um, we know what's going on in Walt's life and why he's doing it. Whereas uh, in reality, Skyler, the Walt's wife, doesn't know. And uh, I think that really allows us to feel for Walt compared to feeling for Skylar and why she's trying to fight for good and um, kind of stop this evil doing. One thing that um, I noticed, uh, I think if I know of a few people who have had similar experiences, um, I started out, like I really liked Walt. I thought he was a cool guy. Um, and well, I still think he's the best developed character on the show, I went from liking him a lot to hating him. I, as a, like, I just strongly dislike him now. I like Jesse a lot more than I did, but I really like Walt a lot less than I did. Yeah. And I think that's that's actually what I'm writing my written task on, is how he's developed as a person over the course of the show. And I think it's, what, only been a year? Uh, the show's timeline is about a year, year and a half. Yeah, it's a, from seasons one to the beginning of five or so, I think it's been about a year, halfway through um, season one. He turned 50 in the beginning, and he turned, like, 51 at some point during season five. So. Right, right. That was um, the dinosaur from season yeah, five. Yeah, the bacon bits. Yeah. Um, to talk about uh, what Nick mentioned a second ago, which was that the show makes you really like, um, or really like, but makes you, you know, interested in and kind of root for the bad guy. And that's something um, that the show The Sopranos did as well. And um, the, the creator of The Sopranos, David Chase, said, like, um, as that show kind of wrapped up, he's like, well, the, you know, these people have been rooting for the bad guy for, you know, uh, The Sopranos ran for about 10 years. So, you know, these, these people have been rooting for Tony Soprano for 10 years, but, you know, they really, you got to see how bad this guy is. So he's not going to get off, you know, free at the end, as uh, you know, a person like that. So it'll be interesting to see if um, the creator of Breaking Bad, Vince Gilligan, and the showrunner, if he does, it, you know, if he sort of has the same feelings and, you know, says, these people have been rooting for this bad guy for, you know, uh, what six or six years or so? You know, maybe they, you know, maybe they should kind of open their eyes and see, uh, you know, what those kind of people deserve. I saw a um, uh, Hank or uh, Dean Norris, the guy who plays uh, Hank Schrader, once cop brother-in-law or DEA brother-in-law. Um, he was on, who was it? I think maybe Conan O'Brien or David Letterman, one one of those guys, and. He was uh he had the host asked uh, Hank, do you hope uh, do you think that uh, Hank is gonna catch Walt? And Hank said, I I absolutely hope he does. That guy I've been chasing that guy for five seasons. I hope uh, sure sure the hell I lock him up. And so I think it's it's probably likely that something's gonna happen. He's not gonna get off free. Say hey, you know. Yeah. You've been cooking math uh, all this time, but whatever, whatever. You know, it's okay. We're free to go. No, that's not going to happen. So I definitely feel like that. Yeah, the idea you deserve, right? So, or, it's, or um, maybe it's something that is unduly uh, given to someone. But at, at the same time, most characters that suffer in the show suffer because they deserve it for one reason or another. And I think that I don't I don't see the directors and the writers just deviating from that towards as we head into this last season. Mm -hmm. It'll definitely be interesting to see where they go. I definitely think that think that uh, the course of the show is gonna change a lot. Um, because I don't know I heard that it speeds up a lot during season four. Uh, but it, it really took like a big turning point in season three, where everything was kind of calm, and then you see Walt kill the really like, unpurposely murder the first person. Um, he shoots in the head. Like the first person he killed, it was kind of in self defense, but he actually outright rams these two guys with a car and shoots him. And uh, that was like a real turning point in the show, mainly because for Walt that was. I guess him truly becoming Heisenberg, as opposed to him just 
kind of trying to stay out of trouble while also getting the money from meth. Um, but here he's like really getting himself into some serious trouble. Yeah. So yeah. Just, uh, what's Heisenberg is Walt's alter ego. So it's essentially his bad side. So when Alex refers to Walt becoming Heisenberg, the whole show you really see this character Walter White flip flopping between Heisenberg and Walter White. Yeah, I think um, Heisenberg, like Akil just said, Heisenberg is sort of um, the alter ego that uh, Walter plays, and that's like the, the man that the DEA is after um, because they're not aware of you know who, who Heisenberg actually is. So I think it's sort of a gradient because Alec mentioned that, um, you know, that to him that one point was where uh, Walter became Heisenberg. And I think for, for people that, that that's something that um, – uh, people see in different ways. So there's a few moments, uh, different moments, where people will go, "Oh, I think that's where Walter became Heisenberg." All right, you know, I that's the point in which you know he became totally evil or whatever. And I I think uh, from my perspective at least, it either it was already there and he already was Heisenberg, or from from the start, or it's something that you know has just developed over time. So those those moments that each of us thinks is is when he turned into Heisenberg is really just adding on, you know, to a to a, sort of a greater conclusion of him becoming uh, becoming a Heisenberg. One thing that I um I saw a while back that I just pulled up again was why did uh, Walter White choose um to tell or choose the uh, name uh, Heisenberg as a pseudonym and. The thing that uh, Heis the actual Heisenberg is was known for was his uncertainty principle, which states that the exact position and momentum of the particle cannot be simultaneously known. And while he was taught, I think he mentioned that in one of his uh, high school classes uh, at some point during the first season. Um, that kind of symbolizes his character and his character development. It's he's you never know where Walt's going, where his mind is going which direction uh, he'll take things. And just when you think you've got him figured out, he'll do something crazy. And he'll say, what just happened? So <laughs> it kind of, it's kind of interesting how that symbolizes his character. I think, yeah. it, um, I think we should analyze how Walt... Like, as Alec was saying, Walt kills those two guys at the end of Season 3. And... I'm not sure. I mean, sure, yeah, horrible, and he killed him. Great. But I think what we really should look at is he killed him with a purpose. I believe it's been a while since I've seen it, but I think they were coming after Jesse, right? Yeah, he, Jesse was about to get himself shot by those two gangsters. Yeah, so um, I think Walt was, um, Walt was really protecting Jesse for his own interest. But was he protecting him for his own interest, or was he protecting him for... Um, for Jesse himself, because at this point, Jesse's gone through some big changes as well, right, with recovery and stuff, I believe, mm -hmm. at that point. So I'm not sure if Jesse is being helped by Walt for himself, or if Walt is helping Jesse to continue his quest for uh, money for his family. I think that's a good point, and I think there's definitely a lot of question in his motives. Um, but for one thing, uh, he's really... In his character changing, he's been shown to make a lot of selfish decisions. Originally, he was doing stuff with, for his family, um, and but then this Jesse thing, if you think about it, he really needs Jesse to be alive, to actually keep himself alive. And um, the thing with also, he, be, he betrayed Gail, who was his lab partner, um, so, that, uh, he, so that his boss wouldn't be able to kill him and he would be able to still run the lab. And I think that um, he's basically running this whole thing on who lives on and who dies uh, just to save himself. Um, that's kind of a theory that you could think about it, but it's not really clear his motives, at least yet, in the show. One thing that I um, think is really cool or interesting is how it seems that Walt and Jesse have been switching roles throughout the show. Um, Walt came to Jesse as the totally inexperienced and nothing about mess. Um, Jesse was the expert, and now Walt is the expert, and Jesse is just kind of almost along for the ride, because Walt can totally do everything without Jesse, but he still keeps Jesse around. 
Um, and uh, if you remember from the season three finale, when Jesse, spoiler alert, Jesse shoots Gale, um, the final shot of the show is um, Jesse pointing a gun and you're looking straight down the barrel of the gun. And uh, what that reminded me of was in the first episode of season one, when Walt was standing in the middle of the road um, after he crashed the RV, thinking that the cops were coming to get him, and he just had the empty gun because he just just so he would get uh, taken away because he felt terrible. Um, and that was the exact same shot, uh, the exact same camera angle. So I think that was kind of symbolic of how they've totally like switched positions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, like the use of camera angles in the show. I think is brilliant just in the sense that you see things from so many cool perspectives that I haven't previously, like I haven't watched a ton of TV series, but this definitely is the one that uh, uses that the most, like the variety of panels. I know that when they um, are doing like the production and chemical reactions of whatnot to produce their product, they uh, show, they're in a, a giant chemistry lab, and when they're pouring materials into like giant bins, the camera is like, inside the bin. So you can see them kind of peeking over and you can see everything coming in. And seeing things from that angle, I feel like it just adds an interesting dynamic to the show that just changes your experience as a television viewer. Yeah, I think uh, the cinematography on Breaking Bad is some of the best I've seen. Um, I, they do this thing where they do sort of a time lapse. Um, so like they'll they'll show a desert or they'll show a city and uh, they'll have the camera set up and it'll show you know from night to day how the how the city changes or how the desert looks and I just think that's a, a cool uh, feature that they do and it, you know it's not the the most important part of the show but it's just a, a nice little thing to watch and you know I, I think just overall as a whole um, the way they show character interactions it's not just uh, as simple as you know. Uh, showing the camera on one uh, on one character's face and then swapping to the other, I, I think they're kind of inventive on the show, and uh, I, I definitely uh, think that it's one of the the top shows um, as far as I've seen uh, with cinematography. Yeah, one thing that I was told about um, was, as we know in season two, the whole kind of premise of the season builds up to the uh, plane crash that happened over Albuquerque. Yeah. Uh, and that in episodes 1, 4, 10, and 13, the little teaser in the beginning of the episode is um, kind of post-crash, and you have no idea what's going on until the end of the season. And the episode titles for episode 1, 4, 10, and 13 spell out 737, down, over, ABQ. And I didn't know that, and I thought that's just... That's, like Jamie said, the little things like that that are just make the show so cool. Yeah, there, there's something behind everything. Uh, at least I think so. And uh, the showrunner uh, Vince Gilligan, um, he's very he thinks out everything, and it's it's very um, you know everything has a purpose and a meaning. Very deliberate. It's 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 very cool. Uh, you know, anytime you're watching it, you're not it's it's not just there for eye candy. You know, everything you're watching is um, has served some sort of purpose. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, I agree with that. Even um, even when the show first started, I noticed um, that the lettering, uh, like everybody's name who's in, who's involved in the show, has like um, if there's like two letters that represent a chemical element, those would be like highlighted in a special way, and that relates to like Walt being a chemistry teacher and all. Um, so it just shows like all the different hidden things that are in there that really add to the actual meaning and message of the show. Yeah. I I think one of the uh, most interesting ways that I heard it put was earlier in the year, uh, when we had been talking about it one time in our history class, Mr. Meehan said that it's essentially like our modern day uh, like Greek mythology, like in, in terms of for television. And the reason for that is just because Greek mythology, um, aside, like the fact that we still study it so closely today and the cool effects that you see in Greek literature. I think that and they, it were very groundbreaking for literature in general. And you see the same thing in this show at TV, like we talked about with the cinematography, 
the way that events are put together, the way that every single little detail it has a purpose. So you'll see some time again. It's really uh, great uh, screenwriting, great television. Yeah, I think that's true of uh, uh, many TV, not many TV shows, but some of the greater TV shows today. And Mr. Mann has said this too, since we're just quoting Mr. Mann today. But uh, I think he said, you know, shows like Mad Men and Breaking Bad are sort of, it's like watching a novel. You know, it's it's like watching one of these great books that we read. So I think it's the same thing with, you know, Breaking Bad, Mad Men, uh, you know, The Sopranos, The Wire, these top shows. And I think it's interesting to see how TV has sort of developed, uh, you know, as similar to, to movies, but it's sort of become um, you know a, a, a way for people to watch um, to watch um, in the same way that people would have read in the past before TV and movies were available. Yeah, and I think um, one thing important to note is um, I didn't actually want to start watching the show just because it had um, it was like about drugs and stuff, and I'm not into that sort of thing, like uh, at least the making of it and whatnot. But then I, as I started watching, I realized this show isn't about that. The show isn't about that at all, actually. It's really about the development of the character. Sure, there's some drugs. Sure, that kind of elicits the change. But what you really are looking for within the show is the change in the characters. And I think as, as you watch the show, you realize there's less and less parts about actual uh, drugs and stuff, and you realize... This show is about Walt. This show is about Jesse. This show is about their families. This is not about what they're doing. It's about how they're developing with what they're doing. And I think by realizing that, I you can really get into the show a lot more and really enjoy it a lot more. And I would definitely recommend it to anyone, no matter who you are, just because of what it represents and what it can show as far as developing people. Now speaking of characters and their families, uh, there's actually kind of a big irony in the way uh, that originally people like Walt and Jesse, they go into this business uh, mainly for the money of it and well Jesse's mainly going for money, he doesn't really have a family to support, but Walt goes in trying to help his family, wanting everything to be better and meanwhile it's ironic because it actually turns his family against him. So. For before, uh, originally when Walt's like not home because he's working and stuff, uh, his son gets uh, mad at him, Walt Jr., and he starts um, like being called by a different name because he doesn't want to have to do with Walt. Um, and then eventually he gets rejected by his own wife, and they're going through di separation and possible divorce. Um, and I just feel like, uh, in addition to Jesse, uh, kind of being involved in the business itself, got someone he fell in love with, uh, this girlfriend, Jane, uh, pretty much killed because of his involvement with this. Um, and I just think that their good intentions keep turning on them, and that's pretty ironic throughout the show. Yeah. Just real quickly, I have uh, the, the two camera angles that I was talking about. Um, just staring down the barrel of the gun. I'll just screen share that real quick. It's kind of cool. How do you work a screen share here? <laughs> I think screen share would make us look at your screen. Like, oh, I guess that'd be good. Oh, oh that's perfect. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's pretty cool. All right. All right. Let me yeah. You got to get this now. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> well, it should show up as yours so, because I clicked on your thing. So uh, they'll see that. Okay. So. Yeah, to, to go back to what Nick said, uh, you know, a minute ago. I would definitely recommend the show um, to anybody that you know sort of enjoys uh, watching TV or is in, you know is interested um, you know maybe not interested in, in like Nick said the drug stuff but you know the character stuff and you know watching something to, to actively watch um, I think is how I would describe you have to watch the show you have to be paying attention to what's going on or you really won't fully enjoy it yeah, this isn't for the casual. TV watcher you might, you know, one week, you know, sit down, watch an episode or two, a few weeks later, sit, no, you, it's, a, it's a thing. It's a very serious show, very engaging. Mm -hmm. um, now, before we go, um, I wanted to talk about one more thing that I think has some meaning, and that's um, Walt's haircut. 
Now, I know he gets it because he has cancer, but I feel like it's right around the time where he starts changing. Like, he's like the normal good guy with the long hair, and then when he shaves off his hair, I feel like that could also be considered a point when he becomes Heisenberg. I, I felt like there was a big change in him at that point as well. Um, when I was wondering what you guys think. I'm not really sure if that's just because of his cancer. I honestly, when I when I saw that happen, sure his hair was falling out, but I really thought it was because he wanted to look a little tougher. I uh, yeah, I would agree with that. Yeah, because uh, also, I mean, having cancer is very weakening, both mentally and physically. So, if to him that made him uh, appear like tougher and stronger, then I think that that would definitely be a motive for him to go about doing that. Right. So it was more him trying to do something for himself because all right, this is where I think he's he's like shampooing his hair and it starts to fall out. So it's not like it was all falling out. Like he didn't have to shave it all off. So um, I agree kind of with both of what you guys are saying. I see this painting right here. Um, that actually kind of shows the transformation. That's pretty cool. Is, uh, this one right here. Uh -huh. That's kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah, that's very interesting. Okay, so, um, I mean, does anyone else have anything to add? Or... Okay, watch so... Watch the show if you yeah, want to watch good TV. Uh, all five of us would recommend uh, the show, especially if you're into uh, television that's you know very intricately produced, and if you have the time and patience to follow the show, that's definitely two important things. And... Uh, other than that, thank you for watching our video blog, and we hope you enjoyed it, and we hope you enjoyed the show if you decide to watch it and haven't started so already. Yeah, thank you. Thanks. Thank you.